How's it going folks? Bronco here, uh, working on the GL1000 and uh, today we are honing some cylinders. So I wanted to do a little video to uh, show to everybody kind of how to do this if you've never seen it before. I watched some videos on YouTube and uh, you know I, I noticed a few things that you know guys were doing incorrectly so I just wanted to kind of show a video. The, the first thing that you're going to want is a nice a nice hone setup. So it looks like this. You can get it at any auto parts store. Um, these these honing stones will be square when you first get them. But you can see after just a little bit of use, you can see that that's got like this radius on it, and that will wear right into the shape of the cylinder wall to give you good contact. You've got a uh, spring adjuster right here where you can adjust the tension on the stones, and this is all spring loaded. Um, and I've just got this in a regular old quarter drill. Uh, on the on the on the on the uh, cordless drill, I've got this set for the lower RPM, and I'm going to explain a little bit about why I'm, I'm doing it like that. Um, I've already done the uh, the the one half, and uh, I'm going to get ready to do the other half. But I figured I'd jump in here to show you. This is what this is what we're trying to get rid of. You can see how that's like super shiny. That is the glaze. There's also this ring right here around the outside and that is the edge where the piston rings actually stop at the uh, top of the stroke so we're going to be eliminating that as well and when we're all done uh, this one is pretty well all done you can see how that shine is kind of gone and you can observe the cross hatching in there um, moving at an angle and so both of these are already done uh, we got this ridge gone right here um, really important when you're doing this that you use a lot of lubrication um, you can use really just about anything uh, kerosene works real good WD-40 would be okay transmission fluid if you've got some old motor oil um, you can use that but it needs to be really well lubricated and um, you know what I notice on TV or uh, excuse me on YouTube with with guys doing this is they they take that drill and they run that at the fastest RPM that it'll go and then they move the drill back and forth in and out of the hone as fast as they can and I mean really you're just wearing yourself out what you need to remember is the faster that the drill spins okay so your RPM increasing more revolutions per minute the faster your hone is gonna have to move back and forth in and out of the cylinder so if you run this a little bit slower, you can take your time, relax, and really control um, your your feed rate. It's a, it's important that we end up with a nice cross hatching here. You want these at you know between about 22 and a half degrees and 45 degrees, which is I mean nothing super you know serious or anything like that. But um, you know you do want a cross hash uh, pattern on there so that the rings will move across it, bed in, and we're creating little tiny microscopic grooves in there that will also carry oil. So um, I'm gonna set up and uh, we're gonna do this one. I've got, the, I've got the crank out and I've got the block upside down because what I want is all, all this grit. I mean, you're doing a grinding operation. All of that stuff is gonna be coming out of the back here and running down into this stuff. And if you had the, the uh, crankshaft still in here or the bearings, all that stuff is gonna get in, into here, it'd be really impossible to clean it, do a good job, and then you're gonna have all this grit in your motor and all that hard work that you just went through to uh, rebuild this motor is going to be shot pretty quick. Okay, so, and then when we're all done, we're gonna clean these things up real good. So I'm going to uh, set up the hone and do the best that I can with one hand to kind of show you guys how this works. Okay, so I've, I've laid a layer of oil down inside those, uh, the uh, cylinder wall, and um, I got the hones just inside there. And so we're gonna run this just back and forth like this, in and out. Remember, the faster that it spins, the faster you need to move back and forth. So we're gonna slow this thing down. You can see it's nice and lubricated. I would probably be squirting more lubrication in there if uh, I had my other hand available to me, but that's the general idea and you want to stop and and squeeze those in before you take that out so that we don't put any any grooves on there that are running kind of north south you know what i'm saying so we want to get rid of all that stuff and uh we're just going to do this until everything is nice and clean and we uh, eliminate all that glaze okay so you can see now we've got this side done as well you can see there's 
Real nice cross hatching inside there. All that glaze is gone. Doesn't have that real high sheen to it. We've eliminated the uh, top ridge right here. Um, now, when you're all done with this, um, it's gonna be really important to get all this stuff super clean. Um, don't trust your aerosol solvents and parts cleaners and things like that. You need a nice bucket of warm, soapy water. Don't trust anything else. I've seen people spray all kinds of like brake parts cleaner and parts cleaner and stuff like that in them to clean them all out. And when they're all done doing that, if you take a white rag or a white paper towel with a little bit of soapy water and wash it around in there, you'll still pull grit out of it. So you need to wash these things down with just, you know, dish soap and some nice warm water. Get all the grit and everything out of there nice and clean. And then just spray everything down with a layer of like, you know, WD-40 or something that's going to prevent that cast iron sleeve in there from uh, rusting out. And then, um, you know, you should be all done with those. I spent maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute per cylinder of actual home time. And um, it's it's really easy to do. In addition to that, I, I also, I was curious to see how, how fast the material would come out. So I've got this tool here, which is called a dial bore gauge. And uh, I set that ahead of time. So this slides inside here. And then you watch this reading here. And you can see that, I mean, those lines are all half thousands. And I haven't really removed much of any material uh, out of these things to really to really speak of. So if you don't have access to a dial bore gauge, um, that's fine. You don't, you don't need to run out and buy any special tools or anything like that. Um, it, it takes quite a bit to remove any, any actual, you know, mentionable material where you're going to, uh, you know, alter the sizes of those bores. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just uh, hone them up, spend about 30 seconds to a minute of actual hone time on each one and then get everything all clean and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching.